Let's go to our Shadow Home Affairs and Cybersecurity Minister, James Patterson. Good to see you, James. Thanks for sticking around. Um, so firstly, before we get to Qatar, I want to ask you about uh, energy. Aemo warning of regular blackouts this summer. Your state of Victoria is going to be the worst affected. So the government on the show a little earlier, quick to point the finger at your former government this morning. Is this as a result of climate inaction? Peter, I have to say, as a Victorian, I am thoroughly unsurprised that as a result of the near-decade war on reliable energy by the Andrews government here in Victoria, surprise, surprise, we have a problem, and a very serious problem, which could lead to blackouts this summer in Victoria. This is the fruit of Daniel Andrews driving reliable baseload energy out of the grid, trying to shut down every coal-fired power station in the state, trying to ban gas from new homes, and it has massively increased the load on our energy grid without supplying any new reliable baseload energy into the grid. Um, yes, renewables have a role to play, but they are intermittent. There is no uh, reliable backup for them yet. There is no battery supply that works at scale yet. And so as a result of the policies pursued by the Victorian Labor government, we have this crisis on our hands. Right. And it is not helped by a federal Labor government, which has got ideological opposition to reliable baseload emissions-free technology like nuclear energy, which is saying it's not even willing to contemplate or discuss. It just wants us to keep ramping up the renewables without any means of backing them up, without energy reliable, any reliable supply to, to stop this. So, so do you take any responsibility at all for, for the malaise that we're in? Well, there was record investment in renewables on our watch, very significant investment. But when you've got a state government here in Victoria which is putting extra taxes on the coal-fired power generation that it has, that has led to the inevitable circumstances we're seeing right now, which is the highest energy prices in some time and the least reliable grid in some time, right at a time when demand for electricity is increasing. When people are buying uh, electric vehicles, which they need to charge at their homes overnight, that increases demand for electricity. We need more energy in the grid, and we're getting nothing of the sort here in Victoria. Okay. And that, that blame falls squarely on the shoulders of the Andrews government. Let's go to Qatar. Uh, James, what's your take on the government's conga line of excuses when it comes to extra flights mm. uh, that have been stopped from Qatar? Pete, I always think it's revealing when someone has a multiple explanations for an issue. They can't all be the same uh, reason for why they made the decision that they did. And it's been very shifty and very unconvincing when they've provided so many different answers as to why they made this decision. Uh, but the highlight for me had to be the most hapless minister in the Albanese government, Stephen Jones, this week, saying that the reason why they had to block Qatar was to protect Qantas for competition so that Qantas could charge higher prices to its customers so that it could make more profits. I mean, if that is true, that is a stunning admission right. from an allegedly progressive social democratic well, he, government. Well, he was on... The just, just, to the just to pull you to up there, yeah. company for protection. He, he was on the program earlier. He says that's a, you know, a fair enough statement that Qantas needs to be, you know, a, a healthy company. The national carrier needs to be a healthy company. And he feels like his comments have been overblown. Pete, they're, they're charging record high prices to customers. They made $2.5 billion of profit. They are paying their CEO, Alan Joyce, tens of millions of dollars in bonuses. I don't think there's any danger of Qantas falling over tomorrow, and I don't think it justifies protection from competition, which would deliver lower prices for consumers. Mm. This whole thing stinks. I think we need to know what is the quid pro quo here. What has Qantas given the government, given the Labor Party, in return for this extraordinary protection from competition that it's received? Was it their support for the Yes campaign? They're not just putting stickers on their planes, but they're giving free flights for Yes campaigners all around the country. Was that the quid pro quo that Alan Joyce and Anthony Albanese discussed? Does it relate to the membership of the Chairman's Lounge that was given to Anthony Albanese's son? We, we don't know what the real reason is because the government has not been upfront about this and they need to be because this is a genuine and brewing and growing scandal. Mm. It's an odd little unity ticket you've got here with the Coalition, the Greens and the Independents standing up for a regime with a questionable human rights record. Well, I think it's very telling that everyone who looks at this is appalled by it. Every journalist who looks at this, any, every politician, the, the former ACCC head, the former treasurer, everyone who looks at this thinks this is dodgy. And if the question is that there's some issue with the government of Qatar, well, then the Australian government should say so. But they haven't made that argument. Yeah. They haven't amounted that case. No, and that's it true. seems very difficult to me. If that was the case, why should they be allowed to fly in Australia at all? Why is an extra couple of flights going to make the difference there if it's a human rights or a national security issue? That makes Makes no sense. OK, I mean, just finally here, I mean, would you be supportive if Qatar invested or, or bought a stake in Virgin? 
Well, ultimately, all foreign investment is a matter for the Foreign in Investment Review Board, yeah. and that would have to go through the normal processes. But as a maybe point that's of a reason. Maybe they the don't coalition want is in favour of more competition. Well, that, that's a separate issue that can be dealt with separately. Increasing the number of flights per week it will be dealt with separately to any investment proposal, and that, that will be considered on its merits. As a principle, the coalition is in favour of more competition, which leaves better outcomes for consumers in the form of lower prices and more flights. That you cannot be more simple than that. And if the government can't understand that and can't explain it, well, then I think we're entitled to ask very serious questions about what happened here. No, definitely, definitely more explanation is needed from the government on that decision. James Patterson, always good to talk. We'll chat to you soon.